When programming in VBA, speed is a critical aspect, but how do we know which procedures, which macros, and which functions are fastest? Hi, this is Randy with Excel for Freelancers, and in this quick training, I'm going to share with you exactly how you can time your macros and understand exactly which ones are the fastest and create a log so that you have a complete history. It's going to be a great training. I cannot wait. So let's get started. All right, thanks so much for joining me here on this VBA basic training. In this quick training, I'm gonna share with you everything you need to know, how to time your macros and understand exactly what's taken so long or why they're quick and how you can easily record those timings so you can keep a history of that. So we're gonna create a log. So I'm gonna share all that with you. If you do want this template and all the code that goes along with it, of course, you can grab that for free. Just make sure you click the link down below if you're on YouTube. That'll be in a link in the description. And if you're on my website, you look for a button for the download. As always, I create these templates each and every week. In fact, twice a week on every single Tuesday, I create a comprehensive application with really robust features and larger applications. And every single weekend, I create these VBA basic trainings to make you great with VBA. Hope you do appreciate that as well. Don't forget to get subscribed on my channel. Also, make sure you comment below. I love to hear from you and get your feedback and ideas. I respond to each and every comment each and every morning with my coffee and you. That's the best way for me to start my mornings. And I always appreciate your continued support right here on Excel for Freelancers. All right, we're going to get started right away. I'm going to share with you exactly how you can automatically and quickly and easily time macros. It's really especially important for VBA programming so you can understand which procedures are the fastest, which are the slowest, and it really can help you make a great developer for sure. We're going to get into the developer tab to get into VBA. That's where we're going to start. If you don't have the developer tab visible, you can simply right click any other tab, click customize the ribbon. Inside that, you'll see a developer here. You just want to check that. Once it is checked, it will become visible. And then you go ahead and click Visual Basic. A quick shortcut, regardless of where you are, is Alt F11. That will get you into the VBA. And basically, what I want to do is I want to start out by simply writing two macros. One that's going to start our timer and one that's going to stop our timer. So essentially, that's all I want to do. Then what we want to do is we incorporate that inside other macros we write. So to do that, we want to create a brand new module. So I'm going to click Insert Module, and we're going to write our code here. Also, just to remind you, I've just launched last month my brand new 400 workbook pack. So that means if you want 400 of my best templates, I've got that available for you at a very low price. Make sure you check the link below. All right, first thing what I want to do is I want to dimension a variable that's going to keep track of the current time. What is the elapsed time? We're going to call that T start. So I'm going to set that as a double. Now, normally what we can do in this case, we'll make it a private. I just want to make sure that it's only available for this particular module. So private T start as double. So I want this available for both macros inside this module. The first thing I want to do is I want to set a start timer. So we're going to write a macro that's going to actually start our timer. So we're going to do public. Here what I want to do is sub and then start timer. So all we need to do in this single line is we're going to set our T start is going to be equal to our timer. Now our timer is the number of seconds after midnight, number of seconds after midnight. Okay, so that's all we need to start our timer. But now what I want to do is I want to write another macro that is simply going to stop the timer. So we're going to start out simple. So once again, we're going to write public and then sub and then stop timer. Now for this particular macro, what we want to do is we want to need another variable. So we're going to dimension our run time. I want to know how long it ran. Run time as double. And the first thing what I want to do is I want to set the current runtime as the timer. Runtime equals timer. So once again, we're setting runtime now to the number of seconds, also number of seconds after midnight. So we have one that's going to start it and one that's going to stop it. So we know the runtime. Now, what I want to do is I want to set the actual runtime is equal to our runtime, the current number of seconds, 
minus the t start. So what that's going to do is going to tell us the number of seconds from when it started here until when it stopped here. And then what we'll do is put this in a message box. Message box. And then we'll just do run time. Very good. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to run this. It's going to start our timer. It's going to run. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to run this one. And it's going to tell us our run time was 3.429 seconds. Okay, so we see our run time is working just fine. Now what I'd like to do is make a consideration in case it started before midnight and ended up after midnight, it could create an issue. So we can prevent that from happening just by one line of code. So we can run a check if our run time is less than our timer start. In that case, that means we've started before midnight and we're ending after midnight. So then we're going to set the run time is equal to our run time plus the number of seconds in a single day. So we're going to add in plus eight, six, four, zero, zero. And then what we're going to do is we're going to use the number sign to ensure that. So that's all we need to do is just add that. I'm just going to put a little note here. It says in case starts before midnight and and after. So we're just making a notation for that. All right, very good. So now what we would like to do is I want to just create a small macro and run the time. So what I'm going to do, the first thing I want to do is I'm going to add another module. But before I do, I want to name this module. I'm going to call this timer macros, timer macros. And the reason that I've done that is that you can simply take this module and drag it into your workbook and then you'll have all the code. So here I'm going to insert anywhere, anywhere I want here, a module. Now we're just going to write a simple macro and I want to run the timer before the macro starts and after it ends. So to do that, let's just write a simple test macro. So sub test macro. I'm going to work on our data sheet, which is this sheet we're looking at here. So I'll just write something very simple. What I'll do is I'll first start our timer, start timer. So that's going to start it off. And I might as well just write end timer. Now, whatever I want, I can write in its side. So oh, stop timer, not end, but stop. Stop timer is going to stop it. So now we'll do just something simple. We'll data, and that's our data sheet, dot range A2 through, let's do A100 dot value equals test. So what this is going to do is going to be very, very fast. I'm simply going to run this macro. And then we're going to see that that completed in less than 0 0.019 seconds. So we see that it's working, but we need something a little bit more robust so that we can actually create something that's going to take a little bit of time so that we can compare some methods. So let's say we want to write data in a bunch of cells and we're comparing two different methods. One, maybe we're going to write cell by cell and the other one we're going to use an array and we want to see which one is quicker and by how much. So let's Go ahead and write that in right now. I will dimension the sheet row, dimension the sheet row as long, and also the sheet column as long. I'm just going to run a loop here. And I just want to put a lot of numbers in a lot of cells just to see two different ways that we can do it and to see which way is faster. So first of all, we're going to use a loop for the sheet row equals one to let's do 10,000. So a large number. We're going to close that loop next sheet row. Inside there, I want to loop through the columns. So this time, let's go ahead and set the columns for the sheet. Column equals one, two, let's do 15 columns. And then next sheet column. So we're going to close the loop. Inside there, I'm going to use the data sheet. So the data, I'm going to use cells because both the row and the column are dynamic in variables. So the row is simply going to be our sheet row and our columns could be our sheet column then dot value and we'll just put in any number in there we can use something like let's do sheet row times the sheet column so what we're going to do is we're going to run this macro right now i'm going to run it here we're going to see all the numbers just populate that and we're going to let it run for a few seconds and it's going to be about uh, let's take a look at how many seconds it will take all right, so this took 12 seconds to run, a little bit over 12 seconds. So we've got all the numbers here and it filled in. Very good. So we're good to go. We see that we've taken 12. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do something very, very similar, but I'm going to use an array. So this is the cell, right? And I'm just going to write sub cell. Let's just do array, right? Array, right? Now in the array, right, I want to do things a little bit differently. But what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to copy this and then we'll make some changes to that. Inside this, I also want to dimension the array and then we'll do as a variant. 
And we're gonna write this using an array, just a little bit different in this case. Now, what I wanna do is I wanna redim this array right here. It's gonna be based on both the rows and the columns. So I'm gonna write in redim, and then we're gonna redim the array. And the array for the rows is simply gonna be one, two, that we'll use 10,000. It's a little bit easier. We can use a dynamic, but I'll just keep it simple. And in this case, I also want to redim the columns. So we're going to use that one, two, and then we're going to use the columns just as we did before, 15. So we're redimming our array here. Now what we want to do is we're going to run through that. So we can, again, start here for one, but I'm going to use the upper bound of the array just so we can kind of use that U bound. And we're going to use the upper bound of what part of the array for the rows. The rows is simply going to be the first part of that. So it's going to be the array one. So that's the first part. Now, the second part of the array is the columns. So we're going to use once again, U bound. Here, we're going to use array and then two, which is the second section. In this macro, what I'd like to do is create an array. I want to fill up that array and then put the entire array inside a range. So we're gonna set that range. So let's go ahead and do that now. We're gonna dimension the range as a range. And I wanna set that range. So what is that range gonna be? We'll do the same one. So we're gonna set the range is gonna be equal to the data sheet dot range. So we're gonna go all the way until column O. So we're gonna use A1 until O. We'll do the same number of rows, which is going to be 10,000. So once we have set our range, that's the range that we are going to be populating. But what we want to do is we want to fill up the entire array first. So let's go ahead and do that. The array is going to be equal to, now we need the sheet row and the sheet column. We're going to set the value is going to be equal to what? We're going to use exactly the same we did before, which is the sheet row times the sheet column. So this is gonna be a simple, now we simply need to populate that entire range with the array. We could do this, the range dot value is equal to our array. And that's gonna automatically set it up. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna save our work and I'm going to run this macro now. And now we see we have 0.13 seconds. So we can quickly see how the array is one tenth of the time by simply filling up an array and then writing it into a single range much faster, even though we're the same. So this is a great way to use the start and stop timer to automatically see that. Now let's go ahead and create a log. You might have running a lot of tests and you wanna create a log to do just that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add on to this timer macros. So here inside the timer macro, what I would like to do is I would like to add a test name as a string and I'll show you why. By value, we'll do test name as a string. So what I want to do is I want to just show exactly what we're running and I want to populate this. I want to know when it was run, what is the name and how many elapsed seconds and then maybe some notes. So that's exactly what we're going to do. So because when we keep running macros, we may want to record those tests. So to do that, we're going to update that instead of the message box this time, we are going to add actually a row. So we're going to dimension our log row as long, and we're going to focus just on these bench log here. So we're going to focus on with bench log. That is the name of the sheet. We're going to get the log row. So the log row is equal to the first available row plus one. That's our first available row range. Column A, I want to put the current date and time and our log row dot value equals now. That's the current date and time. Next up, I want to focus on column B. B is going to be the name that we're going to bring over. So basically every macro that we run, we're going to send some kind of a name with that macro so that we know exactly what we're running. And we're going to put in test name in Column C, I want to put the elapsed time. Now, this is our run time. So we're going to put in the run time. And that's going to be fine. We can add more notes later. So we're going to put this in C. So now what we want to do is I'm going to actually add to this. So we're going to go into the module one. Instead of the stop timer, now what we want to do is we'll just do it in string here, cell right. So we're writing to the cell here. Also, in this one, this is going to be the array right. So array right so now we're going to be able to keep a log of every time we run a macro so here 
I'm going to just go back in here so that we can see. I'm going to clear it out here. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to run this macro one more time, but this time it's going to write to a log. So this one, it's going to take quite a few seconds here. I think it was 12 seconds on the last, but we can actually keep a log of that. Once it does finish, what we're going to be, we're going to look in the bench log and we see that we have, this is when it happened, October 10th at 309. The cell right, we're writing to the cell, and it took almost 10 seconds. Next up, what we're going to do is we're going to run the next one. I'm going to clear this out, and we're going to simply run the next one. So we're going to write the array. And it, of course, it's much quicker. We can now see the log, the array write, so this is a different string, took just over one second. So we're now able to keep a log to see exactly what type of changes that we make and how long it takes and what time the macro was run. So that's a great way to run timers on your macros to figure out what is the best way moving forward. I've used these type of start and stop in a lot of my projects and I hope you'll enjoy it too. Make sure you download this template and you can start using this. If you do like this video, please let me know how it's going. If you have suggestions for future videos, also let me know. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment below if you're on YouTube. Thank you so much, and we'll see you next week.